Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I just want to say it's a blessing to be able to speak to you through this venue. I hope you're liking these videos. I sure do appreciate all the comments you're giving and all those who subscribed. And if this is your first time, welcome. We're happy to have you here. And I pray this information that you get through this channel is a blessing to you. Hey look, today we're going to go over the Pro Angler 14. I finally finished rigging it, and today I just want to take you through all the things that I've done to it, the things that I've installed, some of the DIY projects that I did. I'm sorry I didn't get to share any of the builds on some of this stuff. I was a little uh, tight for time, but I wanted to make sure I got this video out in a timely manner because a lot of people, I believe, will benefit from it. So I'm going to take you to the boat. We're going to get right at it. Enjoy this video. All right, everybody, so here we go. Bear with me. I've got one hand on the camera, and I'm going to use my other hand to point with. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna start right here at the bow hatch. I've already taken out the tub to make it a little easier on us. If you haven't already watched one of the previous videos on all the products that I was gonna put in here, I encourage you to do that so you can get a better idea of exactly what these products are and why I chose those. And so today is just more, I'm gonna show you how I installed it, where I installed it. But if, I really do encourage you to go back and watch those videos so you'll understand a little bit more what they're doing. Here, I've mounted my FPV power hub my distribution center here i've mounted it to this mount that hooks to the pole the mass pole right here and behind that is the 12 volt uh, regulator which regulates constant power for me again more information is about that in the video you'll see here on this distribution hub that i have six dedicated lines i have four a through d that are selective power i use a remote control to turn on each one of those or turn them off. Number one and number two are dedicated power, which means they're dedicated all the time. They're hot all the time. One, I have my graph hooked to. Number two, I don't have anything hooked to right now, but in the future, I may be hooking up the power pole micro pole and I may hook it to that. So A, I've labeled these that are convenient for me. You do it the way uh, you see fit for yourself, but I use A for aft, which is the stern, which is my 360 light. B is for bow, for my bow lights. C is for charge, I have some charging ports. And D is for deck, because I've added some deck lights. And let me show you those right now. So at the bow, I went ahead and I used the Ac Power button lights. And what these are is red and green, so I went with the US Coast Guard rules and regs for navigation lights. So I have bow, so here's my remote. I press B, I have light. And let me tell you something, y'all. I've used these things twice now in low light conditions, and they are very, very bright. There's no doubt that I won't be seen from a long, long ways away. You want them off, you just press the B, the power goes right off. Here I have my anchor trolley that I mounted. Again, Hobie comes standard with these brass inserts that are pre-threaded for this anchor trolley already. So this was so easy to install, no drilling. Just screw it in, tighten your line, and on you go. This runs the whole length of the vessel. And that was a feature that I just really, really like to use. Moving right along, you can see I've got my drive in here. In my drive, the reason why I have it in here is I just wanted to show you this leash that I hooked on here. This is attached to a quick disconnect right here on this plate. Why am I using a leash? Folks, these things are not cheap. You don't want to lose this overboard in the event that you collapse, you capsize. You don't want to kick it out. For whatever reason, you know accidents can happen. This is going to save me a lot of headache in the event that this thing somehow gets overboard. So that was a no brainer for me there. I mentioned that I had deck lights. So again, I have my remote, my deck is for D and you can see that I installed two button lights, one on each side. I press D and I've got light over ambient light. Again, this is for low light conditions. And what this does is it just gives me a little bit more visibility on the deck during those low light conditions. But I've mounted them underneath these plates so that when you're sitting in the seat, you can't see the light. And what you do is you just get a glow. Underneath here, I have the same one. You want them off, you just press D. That way I've just got a glow. It doesn't mess with my night vision as bad. And it gives me light so that I can see all my gear. On the row mode again, I have C. For C, I have charge. And what I've done is I've installed two of these waterproof dual USB chargers. 
I turn the power on and what I've got now is dedicated power that I can use to charge a phone, hook up any GoPros, or anything that I need to charge on the fly. I've got one there and I've mounted one on the back back there. You can see it through the seat right there. So that I have convenience anytime I need it. All right, moving right along. Right down here, you got that tackle system. I mentioned in the previous video that I was switching from the tackle system and just putting in a bucket. That's exactly what I did. I mounted my bucket in here. It was so super simple, it took like two seconds. Put these little tabs in here. It comes in and out if you need it to. In here, I just have items that I need really accessible, something that I need just an arm's length all the time so I don't have to fish around for it. Because we know for fishing tournaments, time is precious, y'all. The more cash you get, the better chance you have. So if you're not casting, you're not winning, in my opinion. So you gotta have things readily accessible, which leads me to this now, which I've decided to reconfigure some of my tackle this year. And because I have so much ample storage underneath this Vantage seat, I didn't wanna waste it. So I've got this bin. This bin is fairly large. I got it at Bass Pro Shops. I think it was like 20 bucks. I think they also sell these at, at, at different academies too. But in here, I've just decided to house all my plastics. Now these are primarily the ones that I keep with me. Uh, for that particular tournament or that day of fishing. I probably have a little bit uh, more surplus than I need, but hey, why waste the space, right? You never want to be without something if you need it and be like, oh, I wish I had that. That slides right under there. So convenient, out of the way. You need it, you go right to it. Here I have my rod holders. I've got them mounted, one on each side, and then I have my cup holder in the back. Now, this is this space right here in between the seat and the gunnel is a very, very important space. I did not mount rod holders on the back. I don't care necessarily for my rods to be sticking up in the air, especially if I'm in a wooded area. They're always getting hung up in the trees. They're always, you want to go underneath a bridge and what you do is you're dragging them on the bridge and I just don't like that. So we've got spot for three there and three here which is pretty convenient, but I fish with eight rods. So what do I do? Well, I line my three in here and hook them into here. And then I allow, allow uh, my fourth rod to lay along the gunnel and up the front of the boat. Now I do that on each side. Now I will tell you, this is the most important five inches on the whole boat from here to here, because I tell you what, it gets so crowded in there. And I'm still working out the bugs and how I'm rigging this and how I'm going to move with the flow in my day of fishing. But I will tell you what, I may still end up adding some rod holders in the back just to alleviate some of the crowded uh, space in here. But I'll tell you, it's working out so far. I just got to work out the kinks for myself. Moving right along, I will tell you, I did decide to go with the, Boondo the Boondocks landing gear system. Now, this is the groovy version. It's the upgraded version. And the major difference between this landing gear system and the previous models is you have this knuckle right here. And this knuckle was fused and welded with a big plate. And it's that plate that you attached to your boat. Now, typically what was happening for some folks is, is they would overload their boat or they'd hit something they didn't see or it was unexpected. And all that pressure that was on that plate would not give. What gave was the weakest point, and the weakest point happened to be the boat itself. Well, now they've redesigned in the, in the groovy model, and what you have here are these things called gussets. Now, these gussets are designed to give way. In the event that you hit something or you're overloaded and the pressure gets too much on the landing gear itself, in theory, these are designed to break away off of here before they do in your boat. That's the theory. So this is primarily the reason why I decided to go with this system, because this is a little better fault safe than the previous design. Not that there was anything wrong with the previous design, but for the pro angler itself, because you have a very limited space to be able to mount, this was the better option for me. I may in the future, because I did get some spare gussets to go with this, I may end up mounting another one right down here for some added support. But I tell you right now, I don't know that I will just because this is, it's very sturdy y'all. And I'm not gonna overload my boat. I wanna take care of it. Again, I wanna honor my investment. So I'm not in any hurry. 
I'm gonna do what I gotta do. I just wanted a little bit more convenience. Again, you got the standard wheel system. It slides in and out of the knuckle, and that's how you adjust it. Here happens to be one of my DIY projects. This is my storage box. Now, I mentioned in my previous video that I was not gonna use a typical box. This one happens to be 19 by 12. Typical is 12 by 12, but this one is 19 by 12. This gave me a little bit more versatility and a lot more space. As you can see in the back of this vessel, you have so much girth and recessed area in the stern of this boat that you might as well utilize it. So what I've done here, and I'm sorry I did not get a chance to make the, uh, a video for the build of this, it's, it's really essentially just a couple crates. This is one crate that wasn't really modified at all. Then you take a second crate and you basically find a, a line on it where you want and you cut it in half. I used a, a, a grinder with a disc and I got it nice and even. And then you cut the bottom out of that one and it becomes a lid. I've got these little knobs that I got from Home Depot. They were like a dollar for a pair. And I used this bungee cord, one's back here, to attach it. It holds it really nice and uh, snug. So the lid flips open. And in here, I've got plenty of storage. You can see here, I've got a three inch tube that houses my anchor. Very convenient, the way I've got this set up. The anchor comes in, in and out of there. I cut a little recessed area in the crate that was kind of, see how it's set up here. I just cut this out right here, y'all. And it allows my lines to slip and tuck in there. And I've got it attached to this retractable clothesline. This was like 20 bucks and it comes with 50 feet of standard line. Now the line that's in here is like a hard rubber coated uh, line that doesn't flex very much. So what I did is I pulled it all off, used just about a foot left of it, and I attached 550 cord to it, and I allowed it to spool back up, and I actually got about 60 feet of 550 cord on there. So it retracts really easy, pulls out, super simple, and goes right back in. I've got it hooked to this clip that has a lock on it that I put my line in, when I don't want it to come out anymore, and I attach it to my anchor trolley. I run my anchor trolley front to back, position it to where I want it, into the wind, so I can set my boat up where I want it to be, to be able to optimize my cast, and then when I get it there, I just make a loop around on this little knob right here, and it holds fast. Get ready, you bring it back in, unclip it, the line retracts, you pull the anchor up, and you store it right away. So I was really, really happy with the way this came out. Again, here's the second part. This is the big bin down below. Right now, I think I have about seven various size tackle boxes in there uh, with my baits. And I will tell you this, you can probably put three more in there. Here you can see that three inch tube that I've got affixed to fasten it down there with a, a pipe clamp. Man, it's just sturdy, it worked really good. So I'm really pleased with this. I run this bungee through it when I'm out on the water to give it some stability and in the event that I capsize, it won't leave the boat. You might lose something, but I'm not gonna lose it all. Also, I take this bungee that I clipped onto this uh, boondocks and I run it through here and it, what it does is it keeps it from wanting to lift when I open it up. Moving right along, I DIY'd my own 360 light. That's, I think it's one inch PVC and then a couple of uh, couplers. And I used a light from a uh, headlight, and it's waterproof. And let me tell you something, the lumens in this are unreal. I have it here on my remote as A for aft. So when you plug it in, that's the light you get, y'all. I had so many people the other day at a fishing tournament say, that light is so bright. Where did you get that? And I said, well, I made it. I'm gonna make a video. Maybe I'll show you how to make it in the future. But let me tell you something, I'm really pleased with the way that came out. Go ahead and turn it off for you. Ram a wire through it. Again, wire loomed it to this waterproof fitting right here. Now you can see that I've got it mounted on a Yak Gear track system. Now I affixed this to this hatch. This hatch is dead space, y'all. Why not use it? Uh, I mounted this plate down here as well. It's waterproof and I can take this light on and off as I please. When I have it off and I'm traveling or I don't need it, I just put this cap on there. I'm down the, the way. This one last act. Funny. There you go. So I'm really pleased with this. 
Uh, and again, some people may frown at this and be like, well, you know, you've kind of defaced the value. Not really, because you know what? If you want to get the full value out of this, somebody may really appreciate this setup. But if they don't, man, this thing is like 20 bucks to replace. So for 20 bucks, the convenience, and I got to set it up the way I wanted it for myself, man, it was a no brainer for me. Inside here, in the previous video, I showed you the plate where I mounted my two 17 and a half FPV batteries to, 17, 17 and a half amp hour that is, I'm sorry. And you can see that it just slides right in there in between that little slat right there, part of the mold of the hole, Y connector, and I've got 35 amp hours on the water. Here I just have that line that hooks to my light right here. And again, you just disconnect these, you, you pull it out, or you don't even have to pull it out if you don't want. Uh, I just pull it out because I like it to breathe, and normally when I'm storing it, it's, it's enclosed or covered anyway. So you just unscrew these, it comes with the charger, you plug them in, you charge them both at the same time, and you know what, they're ready to go. So here's what you got. I think that's about all, y'all. You slide it back in here, close the lid back up, and you're ready to go. One last look at it here. I gotta give a shout out to uh, my friends at Best Signs in Cypress, Texas for hooking me up with all my graphics so that I'm able to uh, not necessarily advertise, but to get the channel and the ministry out in the open so people can start asking questions, wonder what that's all about. And so that, you know, the popularity will grow, not for me, not for the ministry, but for Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about, y'all. This is what it's all about. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, I'm sorry. One last thing. I almost forgot. The graph. Sorry about that. My camera blinked out on me in a, for a second. Here, again, I went with the Garmin. This is the 74 SV Plus. And it has been amazing, y'all. I put this Burley Pro Visor on here in high light conditions. It really does shade the screen. So you've got good visibility during all lighted conditions. And this graph is amazing. And I tell you what, it comes with a transducer that gives you side scan, down scan, chirp, chart plotter, you name it, it's got it. And it also comes ready to go with pan optics. It's touch screen. I may do a video in the future once I familiarize myself with it a little bit more. But I will tell you what, there's probably better pros and experts on these things out there than I am. But I will tell you what, you cannot go wrong with this graph. Again, I think Garmin is setting the standard for the generations to come for the graphs that will be used in professional angling. And just for the novice, that matter. So here you are, one more look at it. I'm going to close this video out in a second. I appreciate you taking a moment to look at this. I hope it was helpful for you. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I tried to detail it as much as I could without making the video too long. Uh, I may go through my trailer build at a different date and just give you an idea how I rigged that up. I try to do some things that kind of made a little bit more sturdy of a platform for my boat, especially in travel, because again, you want to protect your hull and you don't want any damage. Those boats get hot and they will warp over time if you don't take the extra care to build those things right. Um, again, I'm so thankful and grateful for y'all tuning in. I'm so thankful that you've uh, appreciated all the comments that you've given me and the encouragement I got. Again, if you're a first timer, man, hit that like button if you like this video, if it was helpful to you. Subscribe if you wanna see future videos. Again, Fish Factor is a ministry that wants to take their faith and blend it with the fishing. And what we do is we just wanna move the gospel forward through something that we have passion for and something we love to do. And I'm excited that you get to be part of that. I pray that it's a blessing for you in the future. We're going to have some videos coming up. I'm going to try to get some fishing videos for you. Uh, and I'm going to also do some, some, uh, some Bible things as well. I want to take and do some Bible lessons for you all. And just how we can apply our fishing and our passion and how we, we look and how we understand that. And how we can make it in practical purpose and how we live. Because in the biblical days, Christ picked 12 disciples. And we know that at least four of them were fishermen. And arguably, uh, maybe it was six, according to some of the most expert theologians. So possibly half of the people he selected 
we're fishermen. Can you believe that? I think that's awesome because that just tells me that, you know what, there's something special about fishermen. There's something special about the passion that we have to do what we do, but it's a it's greater than what we are, y'all. It's, it's more important than what we think it is just for ourselves and for the people around us. It's really a gift and a passion that's been given to us for the purpose of the kingdom and for his glory. So thank you again for the, for the comments and thanks again for tuning in the channel. Again, I hope this video was helpful. Look for us down the road. And until then, God bless you in all your endeavors and stay safe on the water. Thank you.